Hey, so good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thank you so much for coming to this uh, digital tour of our virtual, uh, virtual tour of our digital collections. Um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, this is being recorded. So your cameras and sound are off. Uh, there will be time for questions at the end uh, where we'll be enabling sound or you can ask questions in the chat box. Um, if you're having any technical difficulties, um, please either type questions into the chat box or raise your hand. Um, let's see here. So um, the buildings of the Weymouth Public Libraries uh, have been closed due to the coronavirus pandemic, but we have been hard at work expanding digital services and creating virtual programming for you. Um, so I recommend checking out what my colleagues have put together. They're doing some great stuff as well. Um, and I had the idea to do a tour of our digital collections, which I've been wanting to do for a while. And I think this is actually a great format for that. So my name is Rebecca Meyer and I'm the technology services librarian at the Weymouth Public Libraries. And part of my job is working with our archival historical collections and helping make them available to you online. My background includes work and training in conservation, preservation and digitization of art and archival materials. So today I'm gonna to be giving you a tour of what we have online with a focus on how to access and search the materials, as well as a little bit about the thought process that goes into how these materials are represented online. Um, and I'm also going to be highlighting some of my personal favorite items from our collections. The best way to view all of our digital collections is to start with our webpage, which is weymouth.ma.us slash libraries. So we have a lot of information on this page. So I'm just going to scroll down to the section of this page where we highlight our digital collections. So our digital collections are not hosted on our webpage. They're in a couple of different websites, uh, digital repositories that are designed to really showcase the items and make it easy to find things. And this is also because we've worked with a couple of different organizations to get our historical materials digitized and online. And those organizations have different websites. So this is the quick way to get access to the collections. We have a more detailed page for archival collections, which can be found under reference in the side menu here. It is under Weymouth Historic and Digital Collections. I'll just take a moment to load there. So what we have online is a portion of our archival collections. And here we have the finding aids for the collections that are fully described. So here we go here. And we have a number of collections here. So with the exception of a few uh, objects that are too fragile for handling, the documents and objects in our archival collections are available to view in person when you make a research appointment. And uh, right now that's uh, not possible since the buildings are closed. Um, and also because these collections are in storage because of the construction of the new Tufts Library. But we do have a great selection of items online. So I'm going back to our homepage now. And I'm going to start with the Weymouth Historic Collections. So this group of collections represents images, handwritten documents, and basically anything that isn't a print bound book. Um, though there are some pamphlets and journals here. Um, our digitized yearbooks, town reports, and newspapers are hosted on Internet Archive, which is a platform that is best for objects that have a lot of pages with text. And I'm gonna be going into that in more detail later in this presentation. So the Weymouth Historic Collections here, these are hosted on Digital Commonwealth, which is a fantastic statewide consortium of libraries, museums, archives, and historical societies across Massachusetts. 
So what you see here is our page. Uh, every institution that is a part of Digital Commonwealth has their own collection page. Uh, and there's a lot more that's on this site. And this is a great way to get access to a whole bunch of Massachusetts historical resources on one site, rather than having to go to a bunch of individual websites. So the Boston Public Library plays a huge role in Digital Commonwealth. Uh, they photograph historical materials for the site, they put digital images on the site, and they add descriptive information. Now, since I have focused a lot on the hows and the wheres of our digital collections so far, I'm going to switch gears and show you some of the highlights of the objects. And I'm going to start with the Fifield Family Collection. Uh, and that's because this collection has old portrait photographs, mostly daguerreotypes. And I think just about everybody finds it really fascinating to see old photographs of people from a long time ago. Right, so Dr. Noah Fifield, just a little bit about this collection. He moved to Weymouth in 1806. And for more than 60 years, he maintained a large and successful practice in Weymouth and the surrounding towns. So there is a description of the collection here, and this is pulled from the finding aid. Um, and that whole collection is available to researchers. Um, this, what we have on the website here is a portion of the entire collection. So the series here reflect how the entire collection is organized. So there is a parallel between how it is organized on this site and how the whole collection is organized. So I'm going to click on the photograph series right now. So we have a few photographs here and I'm gonna start with the photo of William C.B. Fifield, whose portrait we made the promotional image for this tour. So these photographs were all treated and photographed by the Northeast Document Conservation Center in uh, North Andover, Massachusetts. Um, these are old photographs that are very fragile and they require special handling. And what I really love about how they photographed these objects is that they photographed the entire object. Uh, very often when you see old photographs reproduced in books, it's just the image of the person. Um, so you'd just be seeing this part here. Um, when the entire object is photographed, it gives you more information about how it was stored and displayed. And that gives you some additional insight into the role that these photographs played as objects and how people interacted with them. Uh, now today we have family photographs that we put up on walls. We have them on Facebook and social media. They're much less expensive to create than photographs were back in the 19th century. And they're also much easier to reproduce. So this is a daguerreotype. So it is a sheep, a, a, a sheep, a sheet of copper that has been plated with silver. Um, it's fragile, it's small, and it has this lovely tooled leather case that helps to protect it. This is gonna load just a moment here. Okay, there we go. There's a detail of the outside of the case. Now, because this was photographed while it was being conserved, they were able to take a digital photograph of the image without the brass mat. So here's the brass mat here, and here's the whole image. And this is not how you would see this object in person, it's all part, it's all together in the case. So what I would like to show you now is one of the really neat things that's possible with uh, digital photography, which is that we can zoom in on the digital image like we have a very powerful magnifying glass. And we can see a level of detail that you can't see in the original object, at least not without a very powerful magnifying glass. So this image here is much larger than the actual object where the vi visible image is about nine by 12 centimeters. So about three and a half by four and three quarters inches. It's quite small. Okay. And you can do this with uh, all of the items on Digital Commonwealth. You can zoom in on the images, see things in more detail, etc. So I'm gonna go back to the photograph series here. And I'm going to showcase one other photograph. Um, 
This is a tin type. Um, this was a less expensive type of photograph than a daguerreotype. And this is an iron sheet that's coated with dark lacquer or enamel. So you can see that the, um, the overall image quality is, is a bit different. It's, it has different tones than the daguerreotypes. Okay, so back to the page for the Fifield family collection. So this is a, a very rich and interesting collection and I'm gonna show you another favorite object from this collection, which is the herbarium. This is under artifacts. So herbariums are collections of preserved plants. So the note that came with this, which is from 1910, states that this is a collection of flowers from England that Mrs. Noah Fifield purchased at an anti-slavery fair in Boston, approximately, um, well, I was uh, 1840. So there are over 60 pages in this book. So I would infer that this means that she purchased the whole book of dried plants and not 60 plants at once, because that sounds like a lot of plants to purchase at one time. Um, but these plants are over 150 years old and they're very well preserved. Um, if you've ever pressed uh, dried flowers before, you'll know that the colors do fade over time. Okay. And there's a, quite a few more plants in this book, but I'm gonna move on to another object that I want to highlight. Okay. So now we're going to look at the Bates Weston Chapman collection, uh, which revolves around Mariah Weston Chapman. Um, and this collection has a lot of anti-slavery materials because Mariah Weston Chapman was an abolitionist, worked with William Lloyd Garrison, who was the editor of The Liberator, and there's a lot of materials in this collection on that subject. Um, so this item here that I want to show you is the recipe book, which is here. And this was most likely contributed to an anti-slavery fair um, around 1840. So I'm going to click on this to show you the whole object here. Okay, the pages. So this is a handwritten recipe book. And so you can see here, this page is upside down. And this is uh, not um, an error in the digital images. This is how the original object is put together. Um, so going back to what I said at the beginning of this presentation about how I was gonna talk a little bit about the thought process that goes into how the objects are presented online. Uh, the goal here is to present the object as close to the original as possible. So mm -hmm. in this presentation here of this book, it's not right side up, but because of the flip book here, we can just turn it around so that we can read it. So there are um, a lot of cake, cookie, and bread recipes in this book, um, and you could possibly try making them, but the recipes are from the 1840s, so the measuring units are not the same, and also it, they didn't have ovens in the way that we do today, so how long it would need to cook would be a bit of an experiment. Right. Okay, so the next collection that I want to talk about is the Weymouth Public Library's Historical Photographs Collection, which is here. So this collection has historical photographs of buildings in Weymouth, some old class photographs from schools, some furniture designs and some other ephemera that's not technically photographs, but it fits subject wise here. Okay, so we're gonna view all of the items. But since there are a lot of items in this question, I find uh, in this collection, I find it useful to sort them by date, just to get a sense of the progression. So on the side here, you can see that there are subject terms that could help you narrow down what you're looking for, um, like the factories here.
But if you were searching for something more specific, um, then what you can do is you can go back to the collection page here. You see this search box that says search this collection. You can type in your term here. There is also a search box up in this corner. This searches the entire Digital Commonwealth site. So if you want to be limiting your search just to this collection, you can do that here. So right now I'm gonna search for Tufts because we have some lovely photographs of old Tufts library buildings. So the other reason that I'm using this as my search example is searching for Tufts as a keyword brings up 410 items, which is the entire collection. And why is that? So that's because this is a general keyword search. So it's just looking for the word Tufts wherever it appears. And all of these items have the location of Weymouth Public Libraries, Tufts Libraries. So this keyword search brings up everything. So in this case, the search results are clearly weighted because everything that has Tufts in the title is up here first, but it does show everything. So uh, to highlight some of these photos, I'm gonna show you the Tufts Library, the first Tufts Library building right here. Okay. And uh, the Tufts Library was founded in 1879 um, and we don't have an exact date for this photo, but it's around that time. Um, and I'm gonna zoom in here. So the other reason that I'm highlighting this photo is because it has a secret cat in it. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm just gonna zoom in here, I'll zoom in a couple of times. So, okay, you can see here, there's some folks in the windows looking out in this photo. And then down here in the corner, when we zoom in, there is a child playing or talking to a cat in the corner. Um, and this loops back around to one of the things that I pointed out about the daguerreotype of William C.B. Fifield, which is that this is a detail that you can't really see without this technology. Uh, so this print is 13 by 21 centimeters, the physical print. So that's about five by eight images, kind of a standard snapshot size. So you probably could see at least some of this with a magnifying glass, but that would require having the actual object in front of you. Uh, so having it digitized and online means that it can reach a wider audience. Okay. So my next photo here that I like to highlight is of the second Tufts Library building. I'm just gonna zoom in on this image because if you visited Tufts Library, you're probably gonna recognize some of the things in this photograph. So I'm gonna zoom in here and we have the sculpture of Charles Sumner Pierce over on the bookshelf. Let me scroll over here. We have the portrait of Susanna Tufts and then also the portrait of Quincy Tufts. And Susanna and Quincy Tufts were the grandchildren of Dr. Cotton Tufts, and they made the bequest to the town of Weymouth for the creation of the Tufts Library. You can see in this photo here, there's a counter, um, and this, the stacks are behind the counter. So one more thing that I would like to highlight before I move on to the yearbooks, newspapers, and town reports is um, a collection that I think is kind of famous for us at this point, um, the Harry C. Belcher Lepidoptera collection. Um, so this is a very fun collection of many beautiful butterflies. Though true story here is that when I was first shown this collection, I opened up the drawer that had the tarantula specimens in it. So, but there it is mostly, mostly butterflies. Okay. So there is a lot of fantastic material on Digital Commonwealth and I encourage you to check it out on your own, both our collections and the collections of other libraries in Massachusetts. And this is a website that you have full access to from home. Uh, you don't need to type in your library card number to view any of this.
So I'm going to switch over to showing you the resources that we have on another website that you can access from home, uh, which is the Internet Archive. And what we have on Internet Archive are issues of the Weymouth Gazette from 1867 to 1924. So that's the years that are in the public domain. The Weymouth High School yearbooks from 1914 to 2015. And uh, we do add recent yearbooks to that collection. So that is an ongoing collection. And also the Weymouth Annual Town Reports. Now there are links for each of these here because Internet Archive is organized a little bit differently than the Digital Commonwealth site. And this is just a simple way to be able to access different types of materials all at once. So I'm gonna to go to the Historical Weymouth Gazette. So Internet Archive is really great for materials that are primarily text and that have a lot of pages. So they have this uh, great flipbook format that is similar to what Digital Commonwealth has. This might take a moment to load. Okay, so this is another flipbook like we saw with the recipe book that you can also zoom in on. So the other great thing about Internet Archive is that it does OCR for the entire content of the items that it hosts. Uh, and OCR stands for Optical Character Recognition. And this is the technology that is used to take a digital image of text and basically pull the text out of it. Uh, just as a little bit of background, when you take a digital photograph of a page of text, uh, the computer doesn't recognize that the marks in the photograph are text. You do because you're a person and you can process the information that way. Uh, so what the OCR does is that it enables the computer to recognize those marks as text and that in turn is what makes it possible to do a keyword search inside the text. So I'm going to demonstrate what that means right now. Um, so on the side here we have a search box and this says here search this collection. Uh, so it's just going to search our collection because there's a lot of stuff on Internet Archive and if you do a broad search on the site you'll get a lot of results. So there are two options underneath it, one of which is metadata. Uh, and metadata is just the text that describes the resource. So the title, the date, publication information, et cetera. So I'm gonna search for Fog Library first. And we have zero results. And this is because we're just searching the metadata. So I know that there are articles about the Fog Library in the Weymouth Gazette. So what we're gonna do here is now go back to this page. We're gonna choose text contents. And this is going to, oh, well, I also misspelled Fog Library. That would be another reason that didn't work properly, but I'll just show you again, it doesn't bring up any results. So being specific about spelling is also important with searching these resources. So what I'm going to do now is search the text content. So this is going to search all of the text in these newspapers. And this takes a minute because it's searching a lot of things. So I pulled up these search results over here just so that you don't have to watch the page load. But this is uh, what you get there, which is 168 results. And if you can see here, just the, the little snippets of where the term shows up, you can see that uh, OCR is not 100% accurate. It's, it's just the way it is. Um, but overall, it does a great job making it possible to search through the text because otherwise you would have to be going through the microfilm and just keeping your eyes peeled, trying to find the search term, for the terms that you're looking for. Um, so right here, this obviously is supposed to be Fog Library, Fog Open House, but it's, the text isn't right. So one article that I want to highlight here uh, is about the dedication of the Fog Library. So I know that this was September 1898. So I'm going to use the search facets on the side menu here to narrow down my results. So I'm gonna click on 1898.
And I also pulled up this page ahead of time because the search has been taking a little while to load on this site, which is probably my internet connection. So, so I know that this dedication ceremony was in September, 1898. So I'm gonna click on that here. So here we have 1898, September. Um, each object here of the Weymouth Gazette, it is a month's worth of newspapers in one, um, one volume. Now, since this is a refined search, so we'd started with fog library as the keywords, um, and then we narrowed down the search. The keywords that we were searching for are going to be highlighted here. So to find that article, I'm gonna click on this, which will bring me to this page. And then I'm gonna go into the full screen view. Um, have different controls here on the side. Okay, full screen, and then we're gonna zoom in. And this zooms in centered, so you do have to keep repositioning it like this. But here we have the article about the dedication of the Fogg Library and a photograph of the library at the time. Okay, so you can read the article here um, as it originally appeared. The other thing that you can do because of the OCR, and I'm just going to close out of this, so you can go down here in the lower right side underneath the newspaper flipbook, and there is the full text option here. And this, this is all the OCR that has been extracted from this newspaper. And there's a good bit of it that is not, is, is nonsensical, but that's just the way it works. Um, but this is fantastic because this is very accurate as a way of searching through the text. And I've been able to help people find information about um, relatives of, their, of theirs using the OCR search. So this process also works for the town reports and the yearbooks, um, though of course the yearbooks have a lot more photographs in them. Okay, I'll just give you a quick look at those as well. So I'm going back to our page here. So here we have the Weymouth High School yearbooks. And again, on the side, you can search by year as an easy way to narrow down what you're looking for. And back to our homepage here for the link for the annual town reports. And these are currently organized by date published. So they're in chronological order. Okay. Okay, so that uh, just about wraps up my presentation for today. Um, but one thing that I want to mention is that digitization is a lot of work. Uh, so I have to mention the funding and the support that has made all of this available. So the conservation and digitization of materials from the Weymouth Historic Collections uh, was funded by the Community Preservation Committee of Weymouth. And materials in these collections were arranged and described by an archivist. And this was made possible by a grant from the Library Services, uh, a, a Library Services and Technology Act from the Institute of Museum and Library Services, uh, also known as IMLS, which is a federal agency that supports libraries and museums. The Boston Public Library digitized the yearbooks and the annual town reports. Um, and put those materials up on Internet Archive and Digital Commonwealth. And in Internet Archive and Digital Commonwealth are both nonprofit organizations. So the digitization of the newspapers was made possible by an historic preservation grant from the Community Preservation Committee of Weymouth. Um, and I uploaded those articles to the Internet Archive with the help of Boston Public Library.
Okay, so that wraps up my presentation for today. Um, so thank you so much for coming and I hope that you explore these resources more on your own and uh, feel free to ask us some questions now because we do have time for that. Um, so in the chat, I can also unmute you if you would like to ask your questions that way. Um, I'm seeing one question here right now. Um, are there any plans to continue with digitizing the newspapers from 1924 on? Um, that is yes. Um, what is the limiting factor there is what is in the public domain. So that is um, I said 90 years, it might be 92. Um, but we're not able to do things that are not in the public domain right now. Okay, another question, what is my favorite item? Okay, that's a hard one. <laughs> um, okay, do I have a favorite item? I mean, I did highlight a lot of my favorites here. Um, Historical Gazette. Um, the, the, the stereoscope cards are really interesting and I didn't see those. I didn't present those today, but um, I can try to look those up again quickly. Um, okay, so we do have more than one of these, um, but this is a stereoscope card, which is basically early 3D virtual reality. Um, there is a special device that is used to view these. So this looks like just two copies of the same image. There's a slight difference between them. So when you view them through the stereoscope viewer, it gives it, gives it a little bit of a three-dimensional effect. Okay, is it, did anyone else have any other questions or did you wanna be uh, unmuted so you can ask your question? Um, if you want to either raise your hand or you can chat in the group chat. Um, oh, yes. Okay. This is a good reminder from, from my colleague here. So uh, the new Tufts Library is going to have a beautiful local history room, which is where you can come and visit these collections. Um, I'm also going to be working on some uh, more digital exhibits for um, that room. So. Okay, so I'm not seeing any more questions. Um, I will give everyone just another moment if you do have any more questions. Okay, so Stacy, you're, you're unmuted. Did you have a question? I don't, I just wanted to thank you for this presentation. I thought it was great and I know we can't applaud you, but I'm sure everyone um, agrees that we all learned a lot. So okay. you, Rebecca. All right, great. All right, thank you so much. And thank you so much for attending. Um, and do get in touch with us if you have any questions, if you want some more help figuring out how to search these resources, etc. Okay, great. So have a great afternoon, everybody. Thanks, Rebecca.